Good morning, everyone. Welcome to May's Pitchmaster Workshop. Hard to believe we are in May already. My name is Lisa Friedlander. I'm the CRO over here at Next, powered by Shulman Rogers. Next, it is an award-winning legal platform for startup and emerging growth companies. And Pitchmasters is just one of many regular events and resources that we offer to the startup ecosystem, both here in the DMV and nationally. I am honored to have with me our partner in crime, Seedspot, with Miranda Williamson. I'll have Miranda, I'll have you introduce yourself in just a second. Uh, we are excited to bring Pitchmasters to the community and excited to have really two amazing entrepreneurs that will be presenting here today. Uh, so Miranda, will you introduce yourself in Seedspot? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Miranda Williamson. I'm the Director of Recruitment at Seedspot. We help underrepresented early stage founders accelerate their um, advent their social ventures. So I'm um, really excited to be here and to listen to you all today. This is probably my fifth, almost coming up on my fifth pitch masters. I love it. Really. Lisa and I <laughs> both usually agree with one another, but also mm -hmm. have very different perspectives. So we'll be a good team together. Yeah. Thank you, Miranda. Really appreciate your partnership and collaboration. Um, on Pitchmasters. Uh, we've been doing it for four years now. It's it's really a lot of fun. All right. Well, it's my pleasure now to turn it over to Aubrey from Hilltop. Aubrey, whenever you're ready, feel free to share your screen and get started. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Can everyone see that okay? Perfect. Yep. Looks great. Excellent. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to share my vision for Hilltop. My name is Aubrey Ottenstein. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Hilltop. Before Hilltop, I founded and led a nonprofit where I drove revenue to more than $2.5 million in the first two years. And before that, I had a long career in government, including on Capitol Hill, which gave me the firsthand knowledge of the challenges related to constituent engagement. And Perhaps most importantly, um, I'm the mom, a politically engaged mom of two young kids. And I recognize that everyone has an issue they care about, whether it's what's happening in Israel and Gaza or in Ukraine or changing policies on reproductive rights or immigration. And for me, it's gun violence in America. And every time there's a mass shooting in the United States, I spiral. I fear for the safety of our community and for the safety of my children. And like many mothers across the nation, I pick up my phone and I call my elected officials to demand gun reform. I call and I call and I call. Sometimes I get an answer, sometimes I get a voicemail, but never notable change. And after Uvalde happened, I found myself tweeting and direct messaging on Instagram to my elected officials. And I thought there must be a better way to do this. But in truth, the constituent relations process hasn't evolved since I worked on Capitol Hill more than a decade ago. And my friends who are still there have confirmed that offices still use Excel, Google Sheets, and interns to track voter data. As millennials and Gen Z voters become the majority, it's time for a tech-enabled solution to facilitate voter engagement. Hilltop is a voter-facing application that collects direct source data from voters and provides legislators with real-time dashboards showcasing voter sentiment. It allows legislators to better understand and serve their communities. It's free to voters and gives them a sense of agency and engagement. It's a subscription service for legislative offices who gain access to real-time data and raw voter data, or real-time dashboards and raw vo voter data. Submissions come directly from voters, which enables a scale of information that has been previously unavailable. Based on feedback from Hill staffers, Hilltop collects a comprehensive and valuable data set to share with legislative offices. That data is then turned into a dashboard that can be sliced, segmented, based on offices' desires and needs. And for the first time ever, those calls, letters, and emails become usable data sets that can inform voting patterns. Voters are able to download the app and upload their submission in seconds. And for voters who might not be comfortable downloading an app, staffers can upload submissions on their behalf to ensure that all the voter data is kept in one place and integrated into Hilltop dashboards. This is the submission feature, which voters see when they log in to make a submission. They can search for their elected officials, 
read about voting records, and share their political priorities. The submission fields were informed by current Hill staffers to ensure that the application remains apolitical and all voters feel seen in the process. Hilltop produces three uh, streams of revenue, subscriptions, premium features, and data packages. Legislative offices will pay a monthly subscription fee of $499, which was informed by conversations with Hill, current and former Hill staffers. Um, and, and with these subscriptions, they get access to real-time data sets and dashboards. They have the option to add premium services, um, which like polling, surveys, events, for $49 a month per feature. And this was actually came from feedback from current Hill staffers um, that that would be a really valuable uh, asset to the application. And Hilltop will use the collected data to develop predictive voter sentiment modeling, which can be sold to legislative offices, campaigns, super PACs, political action groups, political parties, and more. We see the revenue from this uh, revenue stream being our multiplying force given that the political polling total addressable market is more than $8 billion. Currently, only 16% of voters contact their elected officials. We aim to target those voters first and convert them to Hilltop users. And then we have another 145 million voters to, to acquire. In terms of customers, there are 535 federal lawmakers and more than 500,000 state and local lawmakers. We intend to begin with the federal legislative offices and then expand to state and local after gaining proof of concept and iterating on the product. The total addressable market for public affairs CRM systems is $2.8 billion. And as I mentioned earlier, the total addressable market for public opinion polling is $8.43 billion. We're currently in the process of conducting customer development interviews with current and former uh, Hill staff and legislative offices. And to date, 100% of the offices have indicated that it's important for voters to contact their offices. 75% of staffers believe that their offices would be willing to pay for a solution to automate the constituent uh, relations process. And notably, when asked about uh, the te current technology they're using, the most common answers were none, not applicable, or interns. As I mentioned, uh, the baseline subscription fee is $4.99, which is reflective of our customer, customer development surveys. Premium add-ons are $49 each and reports start at $15,000. We aim to launch our beta app within year one with five customers. This will help us learn from customer feedback and iterate on the design. In year two, we aim to pilot the premium, premium features and expand our customer base. And in year three, we aim to expand to state and local officials while piloting our first data sets. We're currently seeking an angel investment of a total of 355 $350,000 to get to market and prove co our concept. We've done extensive research on the competition in the field and found the primary di differentiator that Hilltop experiences is the direct source voter data, which provides scale and real-time uh, data sets. Our customer discovery surveys have indicated that Internet Quorum, or IQ, also has significant traction on the Hill, but it's a traditional CRM system that relies on manual entry. And lastly, I'd be remiss if I didn't introduce my co-founder, Nick, who is our full-time CTO. Nick has built a variety of applications um, that are scalable and range from exercise applications to dating applications. He has worked in large enterprises as a developer and small startups as a developer. And he's an awesome addition to, to our team, and I'm very lucky to call him my co-founder. And with that, I'll pause for any questions. Awesome. Thank you, Aubrey. Really nice presentation. Um, you can stop sharing while we have a conversation. I think sometimes it's nicer to see faces. Um, Miranda, you want to kick us off for some feedback for Aubrey and Nick? Absolutely. First off, there's a lot I liked about your presentation and a lot I liked about what you are doing. I loved the opening. I'm a sucker for a personal story. And I thought you did a really good job. Um, integrating like why this is important. This entrepreneurial journey can be very challenging sometimes. And when I'm working with entrepreneurs, I like to know why they're connected to the purpose. And so great job there. Um, the slides loved your design, thought it was clean and beautiful, text heavy, quite a few text heavy. And um, this kind of a lot of like 
pieces of what you were saying were lost in a lot of words, a lot of data. And if you just used your space to highlight the things you wanted me to remember, I think that would be really helpful. And also, um, I, I think also using pauses, especially when you were talking about, you were talking about a lot of data at one point, you're giving me a lot of numbers and all of them were impactful and important and I honestly didn't really want you to cut any of them. I just wanted a, like them to show up on the slide and you to land it with a pause so that I could hold that information before we were on to the next data set. And um, the piece that was missing for me is more information about that 16%, those customers. Um, I felt like that was glossed over. Um, I know a little, like just from life know a little bit about what that 16% might look like. But I'd love to know from your research, what does that 16% look like? Will they pay for this? Are they a population that will pay for this at pay that 49 a month? Um, would love to know more about that. That's it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Miranda. Thanks, I really Amanda. appreciate it. Yes. And as Miranda noted from the beginning, we're typically in alignment. So I absolutely agree. Um, I also loved how you launched right into your background that really set the stage beautifully in terms of knowing that why you're the one to execute on this idea. And then you roll right into that personal story, um, you know, about gun violence being your issue and how it's done. So I thought that was really nice. It it I didn't time you because we didn't we didn't care about time. It did feel a little long. I think in some circumstances where you have less time, you're going to have to streamline both of those two things. But I really appreciated both knowing your background and that personal story sort of hook right from the beginning. So I definitely agree. I have in large, gigantic, way too much text <laughs> in my notes. Like they're unreadable, they're not helpful, and not they're counterproductive to Miranda's point. I am sitting there trying to quickly read your slides and not really listening to what you're trying to say. You have to really, the the color scheme's fine, the font, like all that kind of stuff, the branding-isk feels fine, but I, I really think 90% of your slides you need to just totally redo. Um, they're just, they're counterproductive with, with the too much information. Um, for me, a couple of big things in terms of your market segmentation and understanding who your customer was and exactly how the platform was going to be used. So I get, it seems like it's mostly your customer is going to be the legislative offices, the representatives, not really the customer, not really the voters. Um, if it's the other way around, then it's a sort of a different play in terms of Miranda was knowing, like, who's going to pay for it? Who's going to use it? But my big question on here was, is it only for the legislators? Are they only going to get the information from people using the app? Or are you providing them a SaaS platform instead to take place of the Google Sheets that they can record all, they can input all of the information they're getting inbound, no matter how they're getting it? And you did answer that ultimately, not right away. I had the question and then couple slides later, you answered it. So to me, I think that if that's your big, you know, secret sauce, then you kind of have to lead with that, right? We are replacing the Google Sheet. It doesn't matter where the input is coming from. It can be coming from phone calls. It can be coming from texts. It can be coming from emails. It can be coming from our app, by the way. We do have a customer voter facing app that hopefully, you know, that we plan to push out in a variety of different ways. But our SaaS platform is an all-in-one platform that replaces the Google Sheet, spits out real-time data. I appreciated the data revenue stream. I appreciated all of that. Obviously, your market is constrained because there are only so many, even the state and local, right? There's only so many legislators. So I appreciated that idea that you have this data play on the other side as well. Um, on the voter side, for me, I am very politically active and I am constantly responding to organizations. That was my other point. Like 
Are you selling this not just to legislators, but how about to all of the organizations, all the gun violence organizations, all the, you know, uh, pick your, you know, uh, abortion, like pick your your topic, like you said, I get pinged multiple times a day, click this button and it populates an email and that email goes to the legislator, takes two seconds. I get pinged, here's the numbers to call, direct dial, leave them. How are you going to interplay with those tools that currently exist that are used by, if not the legislators themselves, all these other organizations that already have mounds and mounds and reams and reams of email lists that they're already engaging with voters? I think that that piece was missing for me on how you were going to integrate that um, because that's already there. And are you going to sell to them? It, he'll, he'll top a better solution for them as well, like bringing everything kind of full circle at a, on, when you're kind of at scale. Um, that that piece was missing. And then lastly, on your business model, not in terms of pricing, although I think your pricing might be too low as well, especially on the data reports. Um, but in terms of your scale, your revenue, you're not painting a big enough picture for a venture backable company, in my opinion. You're like barely hitting a million dollars in year three. And if that's the case, that's fine. That's a great business. But I don't, I think you're gonna struggle in terms of venture being venture backable without painting a much bigger picture, you know, by year three, year five. So don't be afraid to really, you know, female founders, it is documented and evidenced that we tend to undervalue and underestimate and undercharge. So go back to the drawing board financially, go back on your what your pricing model is and then your scaling model and see how quickly you can get to 5, 10, 20, 50. Like you're going to have to be a hundred million dollar or more company in order to be venture backable. So those were my comments. <laughs> Thank you. It's super helpful. And I've, I've taken notes and we'll watch the recording again for more details. But um, really appreciate both of you providing the, that feedback. Yeah, no, absolutely. Again, like clearly there's a need. You're onto something. You are the person, your background, like all of that plays in. I just think you need to Close the loop on a few of these pieces, fix your slides, right? And just paint a more robust vision. Sounds yeah. good. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Lisa and Miranda. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, Ishmael, you're up. So feel free to share and get started whenever you're ready. All right, can you hear me okay? I can. Thank you. All right, let me share my screen. And can you see my screen? Yep. You're good to go. Okay. All right. Let me move this over here. Sorry. All right. I'll get started. I'm Ishmael Kamara, a mechanical engineer and the founder of the Light Providers. There are millions of U.S. consumers with family members abroad who live on an unreliable electrical grid. I'm one of them. My family members back in Sierra Leone, along with millions of others across the globe, suffer through constant blackouts. The light providers sells anti-theft wireless solar lights online so anyone in the U.S. with a relative needing consistent lighting can buy it and send it to their loved one. This black slide illustrates the problem we're trying to solve, blackouts or power outages. I gave my aunt, who lives in Sierra Leone, a wireless solar outdoor light. She didn't use it like I expected. She put the solar light out during the day to charge and brought it inside at night when she wasn't running her generator. Since it was a motion sensor light, her three-year-old grandson ran back and forth to the light in order to keep it on. I figured there had to be a better solution, but constantly buying disposable batteries and rechargeable light bulbs that only last three to four hours didn't make sense for my aunt. We've taken a human-centered design approach to gain insights into the challenges of unreliable lighting. In addition to this work, we interviewed 10 U.S. consumers with relatives in various countries and five NGOs and nonprofits. We also gave a dozen users in Sierra Leone lights to test. Our research has led us to three major findings. The first is education. Students struggle to do homework or learn at night because their homes without power 
only had one flashlight. Their parents need and use that light to do household tasks. Women's empowerment. Studies show women reinvest 90% of their income into their communities and families, while men reinvest less than 40%. And security. During interviews in Sierra Leone, security emerged as a top concern. It's a fact. When the lights go out, crime rates increase and security systems fail without electricity. Our solution is a wireless light. It's versatile. It can be charged via USB-C, double as a power bank, easily stick to metal surfaces, and is designed for outdoor use. Introducing our solar charging case. We designed and created our MVP pictured using custom 3D printed parts and commercial products. Mounted outside the home, it can solar charge the wireless light. It activates at night when motion is sensed. It features a padlock because my aunt's lights were stolen, highlighting the urgent need for death resistant lighting solutions. They're not stealing it for fun. They're stealing it because they have a need. It will retail for $75. And unlike our competitors, the light provider is designed to securely charge and store lights to prevent theft. So users don't have to worry about their lights being stolen. Our target user is someone living on an unreliable electrical grid in Sub-Saharan Africa or the Caribbean. Our target customer is a family member living in the U.S. who can purchase our light and send it. Over 4 million U.S. consumers fit this profile. They can afford our light because 32% send over $200 monthly to support loved ones. They're experienced at sending various good back to loved ones. The market is big and we can capture 13.5 million in the next few years. When we interviewed users or surveyed them, 80% were satisfied or very satisfied with their current methods of sending goods to family members. When we ship lights to a dozen users in Sierra Leone, we use Dot Blue when we met through the Maryland Innovation Center. Our lights arrived in 10 days and were picked up by users within 24 hours. So our key partners will be local shippers who are well-versed in their country's customs, regulations, and import-export procedures. To acquire our first customs, we'll order custom-made lights branded with our, lo our logo in bulk to resell to users to gain those first customers. This is our go-to-market strategy. We'll start by participating as vendors at African and Caribbean festivals, um, leveraging WhatsApp as our primary communication channel, since that is how our customers communicate with their families. And this will also be followed by targeted marketing campaigns to maximize our reach and customer acquisition. This is our amazing team that has a diverse expertise in mechanical and electrical engineering, um, education from Temple University, the University of Notre Dame, Naval Postgraduate School. Um, I have experience working at Ford Motor Company, uh, my sister has experience working at John Hopkins. Um, Abu lives every day on an unreliable electrical grid in Sierra Leone. And we've completed YC Startup School, i -Corps, and other affiliations and achievements lifted. These are the open positions to be filled as we start online sales and approach our first tax filing. Um, we plan to manufacture in the U.S. and we'll evaluate all options to produce the best product. Regarding intellectual property, we worked with a university patent clinic and we submitted our provisional patent last month. So we're patent pending and goal is to submit for a full patent in 2025. As far as roadmaps and milestones, in this year, we were a finalist for the idea competition. Uh, that's Temple University. And then we won 1000 from the Maryland Innovation Pitch and Mingle. So far this year, we formed an LLC and we completed our MVP. And last month, we won the grand prize in Temple University's be your own boss bowl so that um, will give us funding to help um, get to the next level. And then as we advance, we plan to do online sales and develop a fully functional prototype. Um, so this listed is our three-year financial projections. We're an e-commerce B2C uh, with the average price of our light. Um, as I said, we're going to be $75. And the number of the units sold is captured under drivers. So we project to be profitable in our third year. So far, we've raised 63,000, but to complete our initial engineering development, we need an additional 40K. Um, to bring our optimal product to the product, we would need an additional 194,000. That's for tooling and manufacturing for our first 7,500 units. The so total request would be 297,000. So this is my aunt. 
There are millions of U.S. consumers with family members abroad who suffer from unreliable access to light. I'm one of them. So in summary, what do we do? The light provider sells anti-theft wireless solar lights online. So anyone in the U.S. with a relative needing consistent lighting can buy it and send it to their loved one. Illuminating communities. So who wants to be a light provider? Together, we can end light poverty once and for all. Thank you. Excellent job, Ishmael. Thank you so much. Excellent job. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. Miranda. All right. Um, um, there's so much here. First off, um, I grew up without electricity, so I am um, very familiar with the use of solar lights and the importance and the value of them. And that being said, I don't necessarily think your product is that unique. I think what's unique about your product is who you're targeting to sell it and how you're selling it. And I'd love more time and energy and thought put into that because I think your target market isn't just family members in the US. I think the folks who want to sponsor these lights should have an easy way to sponsor them. Um, folks who maybe don't have a family member but just know of this, of this challenge. Um, and so, I would have loved for that to be flushed out a little bit more. Um, I think the lock is the only unique part of your your solar light. Um, otherwise, solar lights have been around for many years. Um, loved the design on your slides. I felt like um, they were very visually pleasing, especially those are some of your early slides. Um, really liked that. Appreciated that. Appreciated your pace and clarity. Um, yeah, that really is my only, where my feedback is really just flushing out that, that model of who's financing these lights. No, thank you. Thanks, Great feedback. Miranda. Um, yeah, Ishmael, for me, I also struggled with like, what is your secret sauce about your lights? Like I've seen solar lights. We've all seen solar lights. It sounds like People have flashlights or the other sort of light sources over there. Like, why is yours so much better? And your competition slide did did you know <laughs> did you know service? Um, one, it was very hard to sort of read and decipher and understand. But two, it kind of emphasized my inkling, which is, or how are you that special? Like your competition slide did not sort of set you apart in any way to understand why your lights were better, why your the way you're selling them is better, why, you know, your price point, it looked all the same. So I think Miranda's right in terms of, I think you need to figure out what is it that you're doing that's different than what's already out there. And why are these community members in these areas not getting access to these lights? What's preventing them are they just relying on family members? Are there NGOs out there that you could be selling to? Like, why are these communities not fully, don't have full access to so solar powered lighting, you know, in that sense and figure out what's stopping that. And maybe there's a way to kind of fit in um, with how to solve that problem. Because if I'm buying this for $75, but then I got to figure out the shipping and you didn't say how much the shipping was. So you know, I don't know what that is, but I imagine it's fairly hefty fee. So if there is a way for you to be able to sort of do it from soup to nuts and target directly to the consumer in these areas, or at least enable me, the U.S., you know, relative to send it directly there through some kind of partner, maybe the way Amazon does it with these lockers, maybe there's a partner, the shipping partner of some kind. Anyway, I think that you have a some logistics to work out as well as to figure out what your product is and and why it's so much better than what's than what's out there. Um, I also appreciated some of your earlier slides. They were very visually simple and appealing, but then they got then they kind of switched and became that <laughs> they were still visual, which was nice, but they then they also got much more crowded. Um, as you kind of went on and a little bit harder to read and again, a little bit harder to decipher what the messaging was. Um, like your slide about your seeking positions, you don't need that. 
um, the, the slide where you're saying how much money you need. You don't need to kind of go into that much detail. Um, the patent pending one, that's important that you can even move that up front if there is something. And that also goes to both Miranda and I's point about why is your light any better? What's your patent on? Is it just the lock? Like what, you know what I mean? Like if there, yours is patent pending, okay, then that gives us the idea that there is something special um, about your light. So I would move that up and, and talk about it a little bit deeper. Um, I know you went through some accelerators, but maybe go it, that seemed early on in the ideation now that you're ready to go to market. SeedSpot has great programs. So like Maybe there are other programs that now that you're kind of ready to go to market, you could participate in another accelerator and help you kind of get to that point. Um, I think that sounds something that would be really relevant and helpful. I loved your last slide. I would even kind of move that up to the beginning. You you kind of used some of the same words, which was great. I actually liked how you started and ended in kind of the same spot, um, which is great. Uh, but bring that picture up front and sort of talk about that a little bit more and bring that clarity in terms of what you're doing and why you're doing it right from the outset. And then lastly, I don't know that this is a venture backable company. Also, I'll give the same feedback that I gave to Aubrey. Your financials did not paint a really scalable picture at all. You had a big TAM Samsung, but I don't know where you got that from. You just put numbers out there. I don't know what that, you didn't say what exactly it was. So I have very real questions in terms of, is this a venture backable company or not? And again, it doesn't have to be, but the picture that you painted kind of leaves me with big giant question marks. And then lastly, I think this might be ripe for like a Kickstarter campaign. I don't know if you've ever thought about doing something like that, but I think that might be a really, really great way to get some product out there, test the market, see how it goes, get 50 grand or 75 grand in the door um, in terms of, you know, really getting a sense of whether this is something uh, that you can you know, that's worth doing for you, for yourself. So, yeah, that is it for me. And um, Amanda, uh, now that we have, we do have time, so I'd love to open it up. Um, one, our entrepreneurs, if you guys have any questions about any of the feedback that Miranda and I provided, please, you know, ask away. And then folks in the audience, feel free to unmute, chime in, put some feedback in the chat for our entrepreneurs. They did such a great job. Love to open it up to the room, to the floor for a few minutes. Anybody have additional feedback? Yes, Bhuvish, go right ahead. Hey, um, on the first presentation, um, I agree with what Miranda said on word heavy, like the best presentation is something with zero words on the slides. Um, Secondly, uh, if you could focus more on the quality of data uh, that you'd be gathering, because that would be key towards selling it to the customers. So if you can include more on where are you onboarding these voters, what are your costs to accumulate the voter data, um, I think those would be detrimental to selling it to your customers. Uh, and in terms of acquiring five customers, I mean, you're still on angel round, but... Um, it would help if if which which regions are you targeting to begin with? Uh, are you going to target closer to home um, to prove out that concept and like a more detailed plan? But uh, depends on who you are presenting to. Also, if you're doing a smaller pitch, then just include the relevant information. A longer pitch would include um, as detailed as possible. But those were some initial thoughts. Also in chat, I uploaded a link to another polling website which ha doesn't have a business model um, but it's good to refer on I mean just good to see what kind of they have segmented it segmented it by issues um, but uh, those were some initial thoughts on that awesome thank you so much really appreciate those additional thoughts um, Stephen you have your hand up okay. uh, first of all thank you uh, Lisa give him uh, the chance to uh, watch the the workshop. I learning a lot from uh, from people presentation. 
is the very good right. use for me. I'm thinking I'm need to change my my approach to make it you know, perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Glad that it worked out. Any other comments or feedback for our entrepreneurs? Okay. Well, I'll give everybody a little bit of uh, 20 minutes back in their day, which is always super helpful. Um, appreciate you all being here. I am putting in the chat an announcement of our next latest initiative, which is my next raise. Actually, Miranda, I haven't even talked to you about this. Um, so definitely need to talk to you about this. Uh, next is launching a SaaS investor readiness tool. It is our first non-legal product. It is all around investor readiness, aggregating seven different tools to make sure that entrepreneurs, when you are sitting in front of your investors, you are ready to go. Um, our beta signup is open right now. We're looking for 250 founders to participate in our beta. We're about halfway there. By participating in our beta, which we expect to launch um, sometime next month, you will get a free uh, annual subscription, which is a $2,000 uh, premium version uh, for mynextraise.com. So the link is in the chat. Feel free to check it out. Uh, Miranda, take it a look. You think it's something interesting for SeedSpot? Let's discuss. Um, love to have some SeedSpot folks there and participate. We can even set up a code for you guys. Um, yes, Bhuvish, did you have another question or comment? Um, on the my next raise, what stage companies can sign up for the beta? Any stage. It's any stage. It's any any company that wants to raise capital um, and be investor ready. So it's right. really no no limitation there. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. I just lost my AirPod. One second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, all right. Well, again, thank you to our amazing entrepreneurs, Aubrey and Ishmael. A reminder that this session will be recorded, so stay tuned for that. We appreciate everybody joining our May Pitchmasters. On our next.law under events, you can sign up for future Pitchmasters. We do have spaces available over the summer. And Aubrey and Ishmael, we have had entrepreneurs come back. We've had them tweak their pitch and come back. It happens all the time. So feel free to sign up and, and do that again. And I hope everybody has a great rest of their day. I think you. Hi, thank you, Miranda, always you for the partnership. Yes. Take care. Thank you, Aubrey and Ishmael. Thank you. Thank you.